welcome back to another week of vlogging with me. I'm your host, Heather. If you are just checking me out for the first time, I want to welcome you for uh, joining me this week. If you are coming back, thank you so much for coming back and spending another week uh, with me in my life. I, as I said, my name is Heather. Um, I am a United Methodist pastor. Um, I serve at uh, a full-time licensed local pastor in two small member congregations in rural mid-Michigan. Um, I live in a parsonage, which is a home owned by one of my churches um, that's near one of them, with my two children, Abby, who's 14, and Philip, who is nine, and our Rhodesian Ridgeback, Flint. So thank you for tuning in this week. Um, it is Friday, March 6th. I kind of lost track of what day it is. <laughs> And we are in March now, um, so that means spring is getting really close to arriving, and the birds are chirping a little bit, and that sounds really good. It sounded like spring this morning with the birds chirping, and then it snowed. It's Michigan, and it's March, so you don't really know what you're going to get. So um, if you are just joining me for the first time, I'll explain a little bit of what you are going to be experiencing. Um, instead of doing one formal like sit down podcast where I just kind of go over everything all at once. Um, instead, I do smaller clips throughout the week. It gives you a little bit of a glimpse um, into my knitting, which is what this is primarily about, but also uh, my life, my family, my ministry, those sorts of things that we might be getting up to throughout the course of the week. It is primarily about knitting and I do like to begin each and end each vlog by just sitting down and recording a little bit of a longer clip where I kind of go over what I have been working on knitting wise. So why don't I show you what I've been working on? And I actually have two finished objects this week. Crazy. I know. So the first finished object that I have to share with you is the pair of vanilla socks that I have been working on. Um, and those are officially finished. The colorway, this is a Knit Picks Felici colorway. Um, it is Captain Nemo with contrasting heels, cuffs, and to toes, and Knit Picks Stroll. I think the colorway is like Frost or something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head what this one is. Um, the Felici that I used is from a couple of years ago. There may be a similar color in there now. I do believe Felici is still on sale if you are interested in that. I think I am down to only having like three balls of Felici left, which is okay with me because I had a lot of it to get through. So these are finished. This is my third pair of socks this year. I'm not trying to knit like 12 pairs of socks this year. It just so happens to be that I've knit three pairs already. I have cast on another pair of vanilla socks, but they're not really anything to show right now because it's really just the cuff and then like two rounds of stockinette so I'm not going to show those right now um probably at the end of the week I will show those because there will be more progress made on them by that point in time the other finished object that I have to show you is my birds of a feather shawl I finally finished it um I did have to shorten the pattern a little bit um, because I did run out of my yarn that I was using as my fingering weight which was fine and I kind of expected that to happen and I'm okay with that. And this is such a big shawl that you're not gonna notice this little weird blip right here. So let me show you my birds of a feather shawl. It's very, and it's blocked and the ends are woven in so it's like really, really done. So here it is. It's a very interesting construction so it kind of, creates like a big shawl shape but without you having like eight million stitches on the needles so um yeah so here it is i am really pleased with how it turned out i do wish that i had had enough of this colorway to finish it properly but um i'm really okay with the way that it finished and this is like the beginning of the border so i would have done this a few more times or a couple more times anyway, to kind of finish it off. But yeah, I I like it. Um, I'm looking forward to wearing it, although it's starting to warm up, so I don't know that I'm going to get a whole lot of a chance to wear it this year. 
but that's okay because it'll be ready to go for me next year. To tell you a little bit about the yarn that I used, so this color that was most of it, I only had one ball of that or one skein of this, um, and this is from Molly of a Homespun House, and it is called Lembus, and it was from a Lord of the Rings colorway, a Lord of the Rings yarn and charm club that she did. And then this color right here is from Why Not Fibers, um, I believe it's called Echo. And then the mohair is Knit Picks Aloft, um, and that color is Eggplant. So yeah, so the Birds of a Feather is done. Um, it was very enjoyable to knit. It was a lot of garter stitch, which made it really enjoyable. But I was kind of ready to be done with it too, because when you knit something very large, for me anyway, and it's a shawl, by the time I get done, I'm kind of ready for it to be done. Like, I'm like, okay, I enjoyed this, but I'm, I'm ready to move on to something else now. And I have moved on to something else. To something else, actually. Which you would have seen, well, you would have seen these on the last podcast. And I do want to show you, I did get something in the mail um, last week that I wanted to show you. So Molly from a homespun house has had market baskets from Ghana in her shop. So these are fair trade baskets from women of Ghana. And um, time is limited and how much longer you will be able to get those baskets. And I've been seeing them on her podcast and I've really wanted to get one um, because I like supporting that sort of thing. Um, and they were really, really pretty and I thought that they would be really useful. So I ordered two of them. The first one is where my first whip is living in and it is this, is the little basket. This is the mini bas market basket, market basket I think, or just mini basket. Anyway, this is that one um, and in living in it is a pair of socks. So these are from Helen Stewart's uh, Handmade Sock Society, her first one of this year. So this is the Sock Society 3 and these are the Luminary Socks. So here we have those. I have done my heel flap and gusset. I think I have like one more decrease to do and then it'll just be normal normal foot knitting. So these are really lovely socks to knit. Um, I'm going to try to get the camera to kind of focus in on these. Um, it's very just a really subtle texture that makes them really beautiful and really elegant yet really simple. Um, and they're very enjoyable to knit on, um, so I could not recommend this pattern enough. I can't recommend Helen Stewart's patterns enough in the first place. She does an amazing job with her pattern writing, and they're very easy to follow and keep track of, and they're just really enjoyable, enjoyable things to knit. So I couldn't recommend it more. So this is the first, like I said, of the Handmade Sock Society 3. The other basket that I got is considerably larger. I didn't realize it was going to be this big when I ordered it, um, but it was the large market basket. And so this is that basket. Like I said, it's it's quite large. I wasn't quite expecting it to be. There is nothing in this at the moment because um, I'm not sure just yet what I am going to put in it. I might put one of my blankets in here um, because it is definitely big enough for a blanket. Or I might put um, like sweaters in there, or I might just stick all of my projects in one basket in their various um, project bags. So that's the other one. And um, yeah, so I'm really liking those. They're really well-made baskets. Um, they're very high quality. Um, I really, if you are interested in something like that, then um, I'll have a link to Molly's shop down below. I don't know how much longer she'll have them or how many more she will ha she has, um, but they're really nice baskets. I really really like them. I'm happy that I I'm happy that I I did it and I got them. They're not cheap baskets, um, but for me to support fair trade and to support women in Ghana. Um, and their business and what they're trying to do. It was worth it for me to do that. Um, but yeah, I would, if you're interested, go take a look because they are, they're nice. And even this basket is, um, 
is quite a bit larger than I think I was really expecting it to be. Um, it could easily hold like a two skein project uh, without a problem. It's kind of large for socks, maybe even a three skein project. Like a sh I think my shawl I could have put in there and it would have been fine. The last thing that I have to show you, and then I'm gonna stop babbling at you for now, is my love note pullover. And I did cast it back on. Um, there was a saga with all of that that I'm not gonna go back into because I talked about it last time, but I cast it back on and I have separated for the sleeves and now I am just on the stockinette portion of knitting around and around. So yay, here is my love note. Now I'm gonna, I will show you the lace pattern a little bit better or as well as I can. So yeah, here is the lace pattern. I'm not sure how well you are able to see this. Um, but yeah, it is, I am, I have enjoyed this knit immensely, even though it gave me some problems <laughs> getting started. I love it. I love the way it is knitting up. I love the way the two colors are playing together. It is, I am so happy with this and it is so soft and it's just beautiful and very, very enjoyable. And I think this is gonna knit up pretty quickly because they're knit, it's knit on um, US size tens. And my apologies, I'm not sure what the millimeter size is of those, but I think it's gonna go really quickly. Um, the yarn that I am using is, so the mohair is from Dreams and Color yarn. And I believe this color is called Divine, and it's a really pretty like blue indigo, but it can look purple in certain lights as well. Like it's showing up pretty blue right now, um, but in certain lights it will definitely look more purple. And then this is the fingering weight yarn that I am using. It is from AJHC Wools, which is a dyer here in Michigan, um, and she supplies a lot to my local yarn shop. Um, and this colorway is called Blueberry Ice Cream. And yeah, so these are my my colors that I am blending together to get this beautiful, beautiful fabric. So pleased with this. I can't tell you enough how much I like it. So if you are even considering just a little bit casting it on, do it. It's worth it. It's amazing. Um, it has this on here because it is a provisional cast on, so that's why there's this weird blue. That's not how it'll look when it's done. So. So yeah, so there's the love note. Very happy with that. Very happy with how it's going. I'm excited. And I'm gonna stop talking now because I've been talking for way too long and this is almost like a normal podcast length. So I'm gonna stop talking for now and I will talk to you guys a little bit later. Monday now, uh, March 9th, and I just wanted to check in um, because I didn't really uh, check in all weekend. I did uh, post a couple of videos, um, but I didn't really didn't really check in. Um, it was a pretty full weekend. Uh, things got a little wonky with the kids, um, and I won't go into kind of all of what happened there. But it was really it was unexpected what ended up happening, and there were some quick last minute adjustments that needed to be made to kind of accommodate all of that. So that made things kind of weird. Um, Saturday, the Michigan Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church held a special session to vote to spend, send some legislation for um, the church dividing to our general conference, which will be meeting in May. So right now, the way that it looks it looks like the United Methodist Church is going to divide. Uh, we're going to split into at least two denominations, one that will be more traditionalist and uphold um, the current language of the Book of Discipline that says that um, 
homosexuality is not compatible with scripture. That is the, basically the quote from the Book of Discipline. Uh, that's not necessarily my quote. Um, or a more centrist, progressive uh, denomination that allows for full inclusion of those who identify as LGBTQ. So it's kind of a tense time in the church right now. Um, it becomes especially tense when um, you may not necessarily align completely with some of your congregations and their thoughts. But um, I'm not going to say a whole lot more on that at this particular point in time. Anyway, we had a special session and we did vote to send the legislation for splitting to General Conference quite quite overwhelmingly. Uh, so that happened on Saturday and it was a really long day and um, it was a little bit draining emotionally. And then we had at one of my churches, there's a lot of people who hunt and so they have a wild game dinner where that's what the dishes are is wild game. So it's not like chicken or beef. It's like venison and elk and squirrel. Um, they do do they do some fish as well like uh, fish like lake fish that sort of stuff so we had that and then Sunday was normal church stuff and then I had to get Philip back from my mom because he spent the night with her and it's just been a little crazy there is a lot going on for me this week I have a lot of things that I need to get done so um, I just wanted to check in real quick hello everyone and good evening it is um, Wednesday, March 11th. Is it the 11th? I think it's the 11th. Um, and I wanted to check in with everyone. Um, the coronavirus, COVID-19, has officially come to Michigan. Um, so things are changing and evolving very, very rapidly. Um, I saw this morning that we had the first two cases in our state and things are starting to escalate. So just as we're finding out that it's here in Michigan, the WHO has declared it a pandemic and yeah, things are escalating and it's interesting. Um, we did stock up a little bit uh, with groceries, so we're fine like food wise if we have to stay in or anything like that. But um, I've been initiating conversations within my congregations about what do we want to do um, if we are not uh, going to be allowed to meet um, together in person, how do we want to handle that? Um, I've been met with some resistance and some um, beliefs that this is just a giant overreaction and this is silly that we're even talking about this. And I said, well doesn't matter we're talking about it and I said we need to just be prepared because this is escalating quickly and we need to just talk about it now and not wait and not put this off so we're kind of still figuring that out a little bit um, and they have canceled Abby's state solo and ensemble which was supposed to be on Saturday so that's not going to be happening now um, I do not know about her band festival that was supposed to be on Friday we don't know yet about that. My suspicion is that's probably going to be canceled as well. So, um, schools are still on. Um, I know universities are suspending face-to-face -face classes until in April. My seminary has suspended face-to-face -face classes until April 3rd. That doesn't affect me because everything is online. Um, but Michigan State University, I know, has suspended. I think there have been others in Michigan. That are now suspending classes too so um this is this is interesting i've never seen anything like this before in my lifetime um and actually i don't think anybody alive now has seen anything like this as far as it being a health concern so um we have some interesting days ahead i think and um i'm hoping that everyone is staying healthy and washing their hands and doing all of those precautions to kind of keep themselves and their family healthy and safe and we are doing those things here and I'm um, just kind of hoping hoping for the best and I will keep kind of poking in and updating obviously as this week continues because 
it's hard to say what's going to end up happening. I did go to knit group this afternoon. Um, I'm still kind of acting normally, but like conscientiously being normal. Um, I know I saw a message that the March Madness, like the NCAA tournament, is going to be played still, but there aren't going to be fans allowed in. The NBA has suspended its season um, until further notice, so um, things are getting things are getting interesting, to say the least. Hi hey guys, so it's now Thursday afternoon, March twelfth. No, yes, the twelfth. I this has been like the craziest day because I have been um, just dealing with situations surrounding the Corona virus pandemic and um, how to handle things within our churches and whatnot and it's been a lot of time texting and emailing and being on the phone and um, all of that. <laughs> uh, so I thought I'd just kind of give you guys like a little bit of an update about what is happening in Michigan. Um, all public universities now are doing online courses. I think I said that yesterday and now private universities are starting to as well. The state government like the Capitol and the Senate and stuff, they're going home, they're not being involved. They're not, they're gonna be working from home, those buildings are starting to be closed. Um, the schools right now are still open, um, but that could very likely stop. They have canceled all sporting events, or well postponed the seasons for all the sporting events in the state. Um, I know that like the NBA has and the NHL has and Major League Baseball, they are all like postponing things as well. Um, so that's all happening. As far as like so schools, there is a rumor that one, a nearby school district is closing down because of a potential coronavirus person. Um, that school district is in the same athletic conference as the school district that, or as the school district my kids go to, so we may be seeing school closures coming within the next week or so. As far as my churches go, as of right now, on Thursday at four o'clock in the afternoon, we are still going to do worship services. However, we are postponing all other, like, gatherings. The state of Michigan sent out some recommendations of what to do, so that was very helpful in kind of helping decide what we wanna do. It's been a really crazy day, and I'm not panicked. I'm actually very calm about all of this, but it's definitely something that is concerning because all, almost all of my congregations, both of them, almost every single person is a high-risk individual. I myself am a high-risk individual. Um, I have a clotting disorder, so I have, I'm treated with blood thinners for that, and that um, puts up, um, that puts me in the high risk category. I, additionally, I have asthma as well as lung damage, and that also puts me in the high risk category. So I'm even a high risk person. So it's, I'm not like scared or panicked, but I feel like I just, we need to be vigilant here. So we are doing that and um, doing all of the things like washing hands and things like that. But let me tell you, it is really hard to not itch your nose when you're knitting with mohair. Just saying. So I'm at the bus. Phil's gonna be coming any minute now. So I'm gonna let you go and um, I will probably wrap this up tomorrow and we will just see what's happening because it's, it's really hour by hour at the moment. It's a little weird. Never thought this would happen in my lifetime, but here we go. I'll talk to you all later. Hi guys. So it is Friday, March 13th and wow, <laughs> what? A week this has been. Uh, so usually I would be wrapping up the vlogcast today on Friday and kind of going back and recapping the past week, um, but given all of the developments with the COVID-19 stuff, I think I'm going to, um, sorry my hair is like, I don't know what it's doing. I think I'm going to record for at least one more day, maybe two, because the latest development is um, the governor of Michigan has closed all K through 12 schools starting on Monday.
for three weeks. So that means that I will have kids home with me for three weeks. So that will really get interesting because we, you know, it's not really a situation where we should be out and about doing stuff. Um, but being inside for three weeks with a nine-year-old boy, that will prove to be rather adventuresome. So they do go to their dad's this weekend, and we are still planning on doing that because nobody has any symptoms right now. If somebody has symptoms in one of the houses, then we're going to have to kind of reevaluate that. But so right now, everybody is healthy, to my knowledge. This has been a very, very interesting week. And it's been a challenge in many ways, navigating what to do as a leader of congregations with a lot of people in them that are at risk. Um, it has been challenging from a parenting perspective on you know, how to take care of my kids and keep them from panicking and freaking out. Um, so it's just really been a challenging week and it's been very difficult. And nothing like this has ever happened before. So we have no precedent to go on. We're just kind of making a lot of this up as we go. So today is Friday. We are still planning on doing worship services on Sunday, but all of this does seem to be a moment to moment sort of thing. And who knows what's going to end up happening. Even later today, things change so quickly that it's hard to, it's hard to say what's going to happen moment to moment. So I think my plan is going to be that I will recap this maybe tomorrow, maybe Sunday. I guess it'll kind of depend on how things continue to develop around here. And um, we'll kind of, we're going to kind of go from there. And I will keep, keep popping in for the next couple of days. I did want to take a quick moment and show you, I did place a Knit Picks order, um, I think it was the end of last week, for some yarn for sweaters that I would like to knit for other people. So first I got um, some worsted weight yarn um, that's acrylic here that I am planning on knitting a baby sweater for some people who recently began attending one of my churches. She is pregnant and um, the plan is to have a baby shower for her, but that's not until April and after all of this viral stuff is done. So this is Bravo Worsted, which is their acrylic yarn. It is 100% acrylic. I figured this was probably the wisest way to go about doing that. Um, this colorway is Dove Heather, and then the red is called, oh, it's just called red. <laughs> Color red. And then there is just black. And so this is going to be a color work um, a color work little pullover for a baby. And then this, I got, this is some Swish DK, which is a um, merino DK weight from Knit Picks. And this is for something, a, a gift knit that I have planned that I'm not sure I'm going to say a whole lot about right at this time, just in case the person is watching and I don't want to give anything away. So that's what this is. Um, I'm using, so the body is, this is also color work, so the body of this is going to be this dark gray, which I believe is called um, charcoal heather, and then there's going to be a little bit of this lighter gray, which is dove heather, and then this um, lavender color, which is, I believe, called, what's it called? I can turn it around. Sugar Plum. Um, and I have one more of, of these too uh, for the color work portion. So I'm really excited about that. I've really wanted to try color work for quite some time and I am very excited to give it a try. Hi everyone. So today is Saturday, March 14th. And wow, what a week this has been. This has probably been one of the craziest weeks of my life. It has very much been, I, it's, you can't even put this into words. Um, so I have been updating uh, this vlog as I've been going with what 
has been going on. So I wanted to give you the current status of things. So yesterday was Friday and uh, a lot of developments happened yesterday as well, as it has been throughout this whole process. There's just been a lot of a lot of things happening very quickly. So um, I sat in on a webinar with the county health department and um, to learn more about the COVID-19 and kind of what's going on with that and their recommendations and things like that. And after finishing that webinar, which was very helpful and very informative, I went ahead and, um, well, I spent a lot of time afterwards just kind of thinking and considering the wisdom of gathering together for worship on Sunday. Uh, the health department and the state of Michigan were recommending that if you have a high-risk community, which is anyone over the age of 60 or that has a pre-existing condition, then any gathering of more than 10 should be canceled. And that's basically everyone in my two congregations, with a few exceptions. Most people fall into that category. Either they're over 60 or they have a pre-existing health condition. So I was really wrestling with this and the wisdom of still trying to gather together to meet for worship. And as I was wrestling with this, I've been in contact with three separate groups of clergy as we've kind of been talking through this. What do we do? This is not a situation that any of us have ever encountered before. And how do we navigate this? How do we remain faithful and be, um, you know, still be able to help people and be there for people and be the support that people need, but, but at the same time, protecting ourselves, helping protect our communities and helping to mitigate the spread of the virus. So this has been a very difficult bit of wrestling that we have had to do and how do we even navigate this? As I was wrestling with all of this and what do I do? Um, our Bishop of the state of Michigan for the, Mich the Methodist Church uh, issued a statement asking churches not to gather until, or at least for the rest of the month. And so that really kind of made my decision a lot easier on what do I do? Uh, so after that, after having sat in on that conference and then after starting to hear from other churches as well and what they were doing, um, I made the decision that we were going to suspend our gatherings at the church. We do still worship online. We've been doing that for quite some time now, so we already are set up to do that. So that will still continue. It will just look a lot different than it currently has. So it has really been a very stressful week a very anxious week as you know trying to navigate what to do and all of that and so I want to just say to all of you out there you know no matter what your thoughts are on this first of all this is not an overreaction the way that with things being canceled and whatnot it is a very effective epidemiological strategy for containing and minimizing infection in the case of an epidemic in this case a pandemic uh, it is it is effective and it is wise to be practicing this. So it isn't an overreaction, even though it might feel like it is. It's not. Uh, so I don't know if I have ever mentioned on this podcast before, um, but before I became a minister, uh, my field of study was microbiology. And I have a great deal of background in infectious diseases. So this is up my alley in that direction as well. And I am very well versed in, in a lot of this stuff. So for me, it makes a lot of sense. So this is not, even though it feels like it could be, it really is not an overreaction. And these decisions are not being made out of a place of panic. They have been, are being made out of a place of wisdom and discernment. So I ask you to remember that as we are going through this. I also ask you to have some grace for people you know, we don't know what we're doing. This is the first time something like this has happened. And we're navigating all of this as best we can. And so have some grace for some people. Um, you know, be be patient. You know, I had to stop at the grocery store earlier today. Um, and yes, there is no toilet paper, which 
I really don't understand that one. Uh, and there's no Clorox wipes and there's no hand sanitizer. Uh, but I, I made it a point to thank the employees that I saw putting things on the shelves because they're still there. So I made it a point to thank them. So have some grace when you are out and about, when you have to be out and about. And just be mindful that people are making decisions with the best interests of the community at heart. And we might get it wrong sometimes. So I just ask that you guys have a little bit of grace with that. So I have been knitting stress knitting because there's yeah there's not a lot of stress knitting happening so i'm going to wrap this up and just kind of show you uh how my projects have progressed this week of chaos i am really thankful for knitting um, i'm sure many of you are for knitting crocheting you know those activities that help to calm us because they're important right now so i'm going to show you how all of that has been going I'm going to start, I didn't show these at the beginning because I had just started them, but I was going to show you the vanilla socks that I have been working on that I cast on. Um, sorry about the snapping. So here they are. Um, so these have been, you know, the bus stop knitting. These probably won't get knit on because my kids don't have school for the next three weeks, at least. So here they are. Um, the yarn is Knit Picks Felici. This is, this is it. It is called Candy Shop. Um, and it's just a really cute rainbow, uh, rainbow yarn. And the contrasting color is Knit Picks Stroll and it is Duchess Heather. So that's that contrasting color. So these are my vanilla socks. Like I said, I think these will probably be sitting for a little while. <laughs> Uh, since I won't be getting the kids from the bus stop, we won't be going to movies um, or performances or anything like that for a while. Unless I just need to knit on vanilla socks. They may come out again, but they may not. So those might just kind of sit like that for a while, which is fine. And that's why I have vanilla socks, is they are just there when I need to pick up and knit something small and quick and mindless. So they're there. Um, I did finish, I can't remember if this was done when I started recording or not. I'm going to show it again anyway. Forgive me for redundancy. My, it's been a crazy week. Um, so I did finish one luminary sock. And these are by Helen Stewart. Um, this is part of the Handmade Sock Society, the, I think it's season three. So these are the luminary socks. I have one done. Um, the second one I am on the last pattern repeat before I have to do the heel. So here is the progress of that one. And I really, really enjoy working on these socks. They are, don't require a ton of thought, but they have like a really cool texture to them. I'm using a little Hobbit door progress keeper. These are the luminary socks, and these are in my mini market basket, which I got from Molly of a homespun house. Um, and these are from, these are fair trade from Ghana. And she will be ceasing to sell these uh, before too long. So if you are interested in one, I recommend grabbing one. I really like it. Um, I got, I showed this at the beginning, a larger one, which came in really handy today because I wanted to pick up a couple of things from the grocery store. And I didn't want to touch the little baskets. So I um, so I brought that with me and it was perfect. So I didn't have to touch their baskets. I brought my own basket and it worked out really, really well. So yeah. The other thing that I've been working on has been my love note, which has been delightful and very enjoyable and gotten a lot done on it um, because it's just around and around at this point. I am on the ribbing, believe it or not. So here, here it is. And yeah, I was just right here when I started this week and I've gotten all of this done. And like I said, I'm working now on the ribbing and I really have been enjoying this quite a bit. Let's see if I can kind of show you the lace pattern here. 
it's very, very pretty, very beautiful. Um, really, really been enjoying working on this. So yeah, so here is my love note. And um, it's been good to be able to knit. I'm not going to lie. So I am not sure what things are going to look like here on this channel for the next few weeks. My kids will be home. Obviously, we're not going to be doing a lot because we're not going to be going many places. So I don't know if I will just kind of treat this more like a classic podcast going forward, um, at least until this is over, or if I will make shorter videos. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So I will put up something again in two weeks, like I have been. I just don't know what the format will be. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'll see how things are looking in the next week or so, um, but I haven't decided yet what I want to do. This has kind of been lower on my priority list of figuring out what I want to do about it, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I figure we'll just, this will happen in some capacity, and I'm not sure right now what it will look like, but it will be there. In the meantime, I'm going to sign up off for now. I hope you are all staying healthy, staying safe, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, keep your distance from people, stay home if you are sick, all of those things to please, please take care of yourself and take care of those around you. Um, and keep knitting because at least we can do that. We are not quarantined or isolated from knitting. Knitting will continue. That is not canceled. So take care of yourselves and I will be talking to you again in a couple of weeks in some way, shape or form. Bye guys.